So when I give you a problem uh, like 121 times a squared, and I want you to take the square root of that, you have no idea what to do because you haven't, um, you haven't had any practice with it. But now we have. So I want you to, to look at this, and even though it looks a lot more complicated because this a squared is in there, what you really need to realize is, is the same rules apply, the same technique applies. The 121 is multiplied by a squared, and a squared is really a times a. Right? So all this stuff is under here, and ultimately what we're going to do is write a big factor tree to handle it. So let's first tackle the number part. The number part, right? What is 121? What times what will give you 121? Um, well, that's going to be 11 times 11, right? And then you have to ask yourself, what times what gives you a squared? So you see everything's multiplied here, so ultimately um, the a squared is going to be uh, a times a. So now you look for pairs, right? Because you can't break 11 into anything simpler because it's already prime, and you can't break a or the other a down into anything simpler because it's, it would just be 1 times a. So you can kind of think of this as as simple as you can go in the variables. So now you look for pairs. I see a pair of 11s, and I see a pair of a's. So you treat it exactly as we've done all the other problems. When you see a pair, you can pull out a single item. So in this case, pull out a single 11 and we have a pair of A's, so we can pull out a single item, in this case a single A. The answer is 11A. Now you see how easy it is? If we didn't do all of that work in the past with just handling the, the radicals with numbers, you would be very lost with how to handle this, but now you just need to view everything under here as something that's, everything under here is all multiplied together, you have to write a giant factor tree for all of it, and then you can get the answers. All right, let's do the next one. You'll quickly see the pattern here, and they're actually kind of fun to do after a while too. 28 times x squared. And when I say fun, I mean, you know, I know not all of us love to do algebra as much as I do, right? So when I say fun, I mean, you know, about as much fun as you can have doing algebra. But after a while, the process becomes so familiar that it's not a big deal, I guess is what I'm trying to tell you. So here you have a big factor tree. All of this stuff is multiplied together. So we'll handle the numbers first. So what I like to do is kind of break this off and say, well, over here, the 28 is going to be something times something. We'll call it 7 times 4. I can't do anything with the 7 because it's already as simple as it can go, but the 4 can be 2 times 2. And now all of the numbers are in their simplest form. Now all of this stuff, see this, I kind of put the point of it right here, but really that's because I'm trying to show that everything is, I'm kind of treating this entire block as something here, and I'm writing a tree under it. The x times x gives you x squared, right? x times x gives you x squared, so you have an x here and you have an x here. And make sure you understand what this is saying. It's telling you that if you take 7 times 2 times 2 times x times x, you get everything under here, 28x squared. So now everything is as simple as it can be. You look for pairs. You have a pair of 2s. You have a pair of x's. Now the 7, as we've talked about in the past, he doesn't have a pair. So if you haven't looked at those uh, videos in the past when we talked about square roots of numbers, um, go watch them now and come back, but basically since there's no pair here, he has to stay under the radical. So we'll take the single 2 that we have from here and we'll pull him out. We'll take the single x from here and we will pull him out as 2 times x, and the 7 is going to remain under the radical because he doesn't have a pair. So the answer is 2x times the square root of 7. Very, very, very simple once you get the idea and hang of how to do it. Let's do another one. 9 times c to the fourth power, taking the square root of that. So we'll put and start our tree kind of right in the middle, and we'll branch it off to the left. 9 is 3 times 3. Now, c to the fourth power, there's a, lot of, there's a couple of different ways you can do it, um, and, and I'll just show you a couple since this is a first, uh, the first time that we have uh, 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 the tree here. Let's do it like this. c times c times c times c, because it's c to the fourth power. That's what it is, right? c times c times c times c. And you can't break it down any further because the threes are done with that. The c's, you can't break those any, any farther down, so you now look for pairs. I see a pair of threes, I see a pair of c's, and I see another pair of c's. So I can pull a single guy out for each one of these guys. The three will come out from that pair. One c, one of these c's, will come from here, and another c will come from here. So effectively, you have 3c squared, and that's the answer, 3c squared. Now, we're going to do this problem one more time. We're not going to do this for all of the problems, but I want to do it one more time because in the beginning, it's very nice. 
that you get that familiarity to know that no matter what you do, you're always going to get the right answer. So let's write the tree one more time. Uh, first, we have the 3 times 3. Now, when we come to c to the fourth power, there's a couple of different ways you can write c to the fourth. Just like with 12, you can write 12 as 2 times 6, you can write 12 as 3 times 4. You have options. Here, up here, we just broke the entire thing out, c times c times c times c, but c to the fourth power can also be written as c squared times c squared, right? Make sure you understand that. c to the fourth can be written as c to the squared times c squared because if you multiply these, you're just going to add the exponents and you're going to get back the c to the fourth power. And you see, now that we've done it this way, it's very readily apparent that you can start looking for pairs right away. We have a pair of threes and we have a pair of c squares. c squares is a pair. Anytime you have a pair, you can pull it out. So we could just stop right here. The pair of threes gives you a three. And the pair of c squares, you can just pull out one of them like you always can and have c squared. Notice that you get exactly the same answer in both cases. Now, of course, you could take the c squared and break it into c times c and take this as c times c. And when you do that, you're going to get exactly the same answer either way. So again, I keep hammering this in over and over and over again that as long as you're following the rules that I'm laying out for you, there's many paths to get to the same answer and you'll always get the right one uh, if you just follow those rules. So 25 uh, times d to the sixth power. I'm going to take the square root of that monster. So you do the same thing. You just do a tree here. So we'll start with a little node in the middle here. The 25 can easily be written as the 5 times the 5. right? And then you have to ask yourself, what is d to the sixth? right? So we, we could do d times d times d times d times d. We could do it six times, of course, and start circling pairs. That, that's totally fine. That's nothing wrong with that. But then you realize, well, d to the sixth can be written as d to the third times d to the third. And that's already a pair, right? So that's going to save you a little bit of time because, because you see, when you multiply these together, you add the exponents. So d to the sixth is going to be equal to this. And when we have it written like this, the fives become a pair that we can pull out and the d cubes become something that we can pull out. So the five comes out as a single five and the d cube comes out as a single d cube. The answer is five d cubed. Again, as a mental exercise, write this as d times d times d times d times d times d and start circling pairs, and you'll see that you're going to get exactly the same thing. All right, let's go on to do another problem. Uh, 80 times a squared times b squared. Now this one is a little more complicated because we have not one but two variables in here, but as you probably figured, you're going to do exactly the same thing uh, for all of these. Now, for the numbers, what times what gives you 80? You can do whatever you want. I'm going to pick 8 times 10. And we'll continue down the tree here, but then let's, let's go on uh, and do the a here. What times what gives you a squared? Well, a times a. Right? And what times what gives you b? b times b. So we kind of go one level in the tree. This is going to be 8 times 10 times a times a times b times b. This whole thing multiplied together gives us what's under there. And now we go one step level and uh, one step deeper and try to fill this out. 8 uh, can be written as 2 times 4. 10 can be written as 2 times 5. And the 4 here can be written as 2 times 2. Everything else is, is basically prime because when you look at it, the 2 down here at the bottom, the 2's here, the 5's here, the variables you can't do anything more with because we've already, you know, kind of done that guy. So then we try to go and circle pairs. The 2 times the 2 here is pair. The 2 times the 2 here is a pair. The 5 is totally orphaned. We don't have anything here, but we have a pair of A's and we have a pair of B's. So now we have everything we need to go ahead and write the final answer, right? On the outside, we pull a single 2 from here, and we multiply it by a single 2 that we can pull out from this one. Uh, and then we have, what else can we pull out? A single A and a single B multiplied together. So we'll write this as A times B. And then underneath the radical is going to be everything that's left over. In this case, there's just a 5 left over. So what we have is 4AB uh, root 5. And that's how you would write the answer, 4AB root 5. You see, the process for all of these is going to be, you know, the same. So let's do one more, and we'll call it a day for this uh, lesson. 75 times r cubed. Let's go ahead and take the square root of that. 
So 75 is going to be 3 times 25 uh, times r times r times r. So we can just split it out like this. And the 25 can be written as the 5 times 5. We've gone as far down as we can in this tree, and we start circling pairs. We have a pair of 5s and a pair of r's. So now this one's a little different because we have an orphan 3. We don't have a match for him, and we have a single r that's an orphaned also. So we'll go ahead and treat that appropriately. Now, the 5, we can pull a 5 out. From this pair of r's right here, we can pull a single r out, so it would be 5r. And then we have to open up a radical, and everything left goes under there. 3 times the single r left. Don't forget all this stuff's multiplied together, so it's just 3 times r, or 3r. So the answer is 5r times the root, the square root, of 3r. That looks a little bit weird, but that's exactly what the answer is. So all of these problems, they're all done the same way. And we're not done. We're going to do some more in the next lesson. But effectively, what you're doing is you're writing a factor tree, including your variables, pulling out pairs. And as you've seen from the examples here, it isn't that complicated. We just have to kind of crank through it. So let's go on to the next lesson, where we'll do some more. And though this get a little more complicated as far as we'll inv involve some fractions and some other things, but effectively, we'll be doing the same thing for all of these problems. So make sure you can do all of these and then follow me on to the next lesson right now. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.